Okay, so the portable pocketable camera market is getting a bit crowded at the moment. We've got some really interesting cameras to choose from. Today we're talking about, in particular, these two. We've got the Canon V10, which is Canon's proprietary vlogging camera. It's just for vlogging. It has got a photo mode as well, but it is just designed for personal video recording. And then you've got the Insta360 Go 3, the new small, tiny little action camera, which actually pops out of this little case. If you haven't seen it before, snaps in there so you can use these separately or together. And then it is designed for vlogging as well because you've got this little flip up screen built into this camera body. So these two cameras are sort of designed to do the same thing. Very, very similar cameras, similar prices, and we want to talk about them and sort of compare them in this video today. If you're new to the channel, please do make sure you subscribe though. Press the bell so you don't miss any future uploads because we have got the DJI Action 4 just came in yesterday. So we're testing that in a future video coming up against the GoPro 11 and the DJI Action 3, the previous generation. So that's the next video that's coming. So make sure you do press the bell so you don't miss that future upload. Um, I'm not diving too deep into about the GoPro 11 because we have got strong rumors that the GoPro 12 will be released next month. We pretty much know it's every September and they look like they're going for a one inch sensor. So it's gonna be very interesting to see what GoPro do, what sort of camera they do come out with and if those rumors are true. So again, stay tuned for that one. So. V10 or the Go 3? First of all, let's just look at the image quality because that's the first thing that we want to see what they look like side by side in a normal scenario using these as a vlogging camera. Okay, image quality test. You can see from the two cameras that there is a bit of a difference with the field of view as well. The stabilization on the Canon is turned on, so it does crop in a little bit. If you turn the, the uh, stabilization off, it obviously the, reduces the crop, but then you don't get that stabilization. With the Insta360 GO 3, you've got that fantastic flow state stabilization, which is unbelievable, and it's on all the time. And this is in their most narrow field of view. This is linear, so this is sort of a more natural field of view. Over the years of reviewing cameras, I've I've kind of got used to the action camera look. You have got face detection on the Insta360 GO 3 and it's in vibrant mode. I just like the look of the picture. It just looks very nice to me, very colorful, very contrasty. I just like the image. With the Canon V10, it just looks a little bit washed out. It's 4K compared to 2.7K. We're both on 25 frames per second. Stabilization, a little test. If I walk a little bit faster, you can see it. But with the Canon V10, I've just been a little bit disappointed with the image quality. Considering it's 4K, we've only got sort of a face detection autofocus on the face, so it, I've noticed with the playback it doesn't look exceptional. But yeah, you let me know side by side what these look like. For me, I just prefer the Go 3. It's smaller, lighter, more compact, and the image quality is just as good, if not better, than the Canon V10. So you know you be the decider so when it comes to size now there's a notable difference this camera the go 3 is a lot smaller it's probably a similar weight in all honesty because this is sort of made out of a very cheap and lightweight plastic so weight wise they are very similar as well when you do separate these two cameras though there is a notable difference you can use this for about 45 minutes standalone with a built-in battery and then for about in my testing about 140 minutes with the combined action pod as well so but i mean if you take that out it's a very small camera there's magnetic mounting options with the magnetic necklace that comes in the box so you can sort of snap it on for pov shots there aren't those options with the V10. It's a bigger camera to start with. There's only the quarter inch on the bottom for mounting to like a standard tripod. You could add a tripod mount on this to add to different bigger tripods. So yeah, there's no special magnetic mounting system when it comes to this camera. You can't reuse it as a POV camera. I suppose you could on like a GoPro mount, but it's quite big for doing that. Um, so when it comes to size, portability, pocketability, the Go 3 is gonna win all the time. It's just a smaller device. Shooting. Wow. Shooting modes and features, we've got a bunch of different modes on the Go 3. We've got time lapse, we've got star lapse, we've got time shift for getting those really interesting fast hyper lapse kind of videos. We've got loop recording mode, so you could actually put this in your car and use it like a safety cam. We've got slow motion as well built into this. We've also got that free frame video mode, which allows you to record in 1440p and keep the horizon locked no matter what 
sort of orientation it's in. So I used this in the swimming pool recently when I was away on holiday and it was spinning around but the horizon was kept dead level. When it comes to the V10, you've simply got 4K video and you've got photo mode. The photos aren't the best, I've taken a few of this and you wouldn't use this as a photography device. It is just designed for the casual user, the TikToker, the Instagrammer, the vlogger. So it's not really the device that's gonna have multiple features. That's all it can do. 4K video, 1080p video if you wanna to go to 1080p, and it's video and photo. With the Go 3, you've got all those different options, those recording creative different modes to do with this camera. So it's, I mean, when it comes to features, the Go 3 again stands out. So accessories. There's a bunch of different accessories for the Go 3. There's a bunch of different mounting options. The magnetic swivel mount that comes in the box. You've got the magnetic necklace that comes in the box. You've also got the easy clip that clips onto your hat for different POV shots for driving around and things like that. A bunch of accessories into 360 are really good actually about thinking about their cameras, looking at different accessories, different shooting options and bringing them out really quickly. So there's always different options for creative shots with their accessories. And if you go onto their website, I'll link it down below you can sort of search through the myriad of accessories you can get for this camera when it comes to the Canon there's this that comes with the vlogging setup it's the cage that this camera goes inside and when this came it's made of plastic I was a little bit disappointed it wasn't a metal cage you can then add external audio options there's quarter inch on the side for handles for example but then it turns it from a pocketable device to like a quite a big chunky vlogging device so yeah I, I don't tend to use that I just sort of have it stand alone to try and keep it small and compact so yeah accessories you're gonna have loads of options when it comes to Insta360 Go 3 you haven't got that many accessories for the Canon if this was a football match I would call it like a 4-1-5-1 because the Go 3 has all those features it is a more rounded device when it comes to using this thing every day Yes, the Canon has 4K. Yes, you can add external audio, and that is the only advantage. It's got the 3.5 millimeter mic jack on here for adding an external audio device. You can't do that with the Go 3, and that, for me, is the only advantage that this camera has over this one. That's why I'd call it a 4-1, and a pretty damning result, really, for the Canon camera. I don't fully recommend this at all. It's got the worst image quality in my eyes. The camera on this looks better even though it's a lower resolution. It's smaller, it's lighter, it's got loads more features. The battery life is a lot better. It's just an all round better camera in, in my opinion. So that's why I'd fully recommend this for the same price more or less as well. So yeah, that's it for this one. Um, the Go 3 is the camera to go for if you're after a small pocketable vlogging device, action camera, all round creative camera. It's a fantastic camera and it's the one I've been using a lot recently. So the Canon, well, it's gone past the 30 days I've had this camera now. So if it hadn't, then I would be sending this back. It's not the best device and I do not recommend it. But that's it for this video. Let me know if you've got any thoughts in the comments section down below. Like I said, do make sure you stay tuned for the Action 4 videos coming soon other devices on the way as well. And GoPro probably won't send me the camera, so but when that is released, I will definitely buy that and review it against all these other small, pocketable, personal filming devices. It's an exciting time. I love all these little cameras, but this one is the one I choose at the moment.